Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard the Wright Flyer. As always, this is your captain, Randy Wright speaking, and I'd like to take this opportunity to personally thank you for choosing to fly over the friendly airwaves with us here at our state-of-the-art radio program at Radio Aviation Excellence, the Wright Flyer. Well, folks, without any further ado, let's go ahead and delve in to the topic I have set aside for this program. Remember in yesterday's program I talked about how strange it was that Biden hasn't really done a press conference? The reason this is strange is that most presidents usually have press conferences all the time. There's plenty of reasons for this. Uh, It allows them to set a message. It allows them to put a personal spin on it. It allows them to connect with the American people. And what I find so funny uh, about all of this is that Biden and his staff just sit there and say that this is one of the best personal connections that he has with the people, that he can show empathy, that he can show connection. And I remember laughing about it when I first read that and when we first discussed that together because it was just moronic, idiotic for want of a better term. But that is how disconnected these people are. They honestly believe this. And what what that comes down to, I think, is just that they have uh, <laughs> been drinking their own Kool-Aid. Otherwise, how else could they make such an absurd statement that is not supported by nor corroborated by any facts? It just doesn't make sense, yet it is something we see play out in repetitive fashion with the Biden administration. His staff and his personnel, and he himself, uh, repeat it. But ultimately what it boils down to is the guy is off his rockers. And I don't think he is alone in that. This is all mass hysteria within their ranks and within their file. And they're expecting us to buy into it. Just look at how they gaslight and embrace these radical left-wing positions and then play it off as if that's normal. Well, ladies and gentlemen, no, it's not normal. That's not regular. That's not the way of the world. But it gets even more bizarre. It really does with this. Over here at the Post Millennial by Libby Emmons, we have breaking. Biden says he's outperformed expectations and has no idea why Americans question his mental fitness in rare press conference. My God, you, you have to be kidding me. Why on earth would this man say this? Clearly he's delusional. His mental acuity has been questioned from day one, and the signs are obvious. One merely needs to look back at the Let's Go Brandon video with NORAD, that phone call. He had no idea what that meant. He literally had no idea, but his wife did. Dr. Jill Biden did, but no, not Joe himself. And again, what it is, is he is that out of touch. And I love how he says, I don't think I've overpromised at all and will stay on track. Really? Really? Well, I suppose if that's what you think, okay. But here he goes. Let's, let's take a look at this. President Biden held a press conference on Wednesday as the nation nears one year of his presidency. He claimed repeatedly that he doesn't know what Republicans stand for. In answer to the first question about if he had overpromised during his first year, he said, I don't think I've overpromised at all and will stay on this track. Oh, you always ask me the nicest questions. 
I know you do. All right. I... None of them make a lot of sense to me, but I... Well, that's because you don't understand what's going on and you don't know where you are. Well, let's, let's try Fire away. Come a on. new year. Uh, why are you trying so hard in your first year to pull the country so far to the left? Well, I'm not. I don't know what you consider to be too far to the left. Well, that's easy, Joe. That's really easy. That's an easy one to answer. Pushing for vaccine mandates, that's too far to the left. Pushing to federalize elections, that's too far to the left. Basically attacking all that we have known as a nation and people for generation after generation, that's too far to the left. But Joe, go ahead and continue with the nonsense, please. If in fact we're talking about making sure that we had the money for COVID, making sure we had the money to put together the bipartisan infrastructure, making sure we were able to provide for those things. I, what? <laughs> you see, folks, this is the madness. And the madness is just flowing through him. Flowing through him nonstop. And why? It's because he is that disconnected. And the left has gone that far to the left. And look at how he's just acting as though there was bipartisan support for that. The bipartisan support that he had came from rhinos, basically. Those who are sellouts. Those who do not speak for the conservative movement or the American people. But again, this is just par for the course when it comes to this administration. And, again, the rankin' rampant corruption that has come to completely uh, personify, for lack of a better term, his administration is right there, plain as day, for us all to see. It's an ugly thing. And yet, he... He comes across as a bumbling buffoon, does he not? I mean, blaming Republicans, claiming that they don't stand for anything. Name me one thing they're for. Well, let's start with border security. That was one thing that uh, Trump was for. Uh, maybe fiscal responsibility at one point in time. No, that's been a real long time since Republicans have stood for that, but... Uh, there was a time for that. How about law and order and not allowing Black Lives Matter or Antifa to burn down our cities? Oh, but that's right. You're more focused on January 6th. Something that is essentially a non-entity. But Biden did say, I didn't overpromise, but I have probably outperformed. Good heavens. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot be more out of touch than that. Over... Overperformed? Uh, I don't know about you, but let's, let's stop and think about the terrible things that his policies have created. Let's think about how gas prices have skyrocketed. Let's think about how all that we have desired as, as a nation and people has gotten harder to do. Living has gotten out of control thanks to the way that inflation is. We can't ignore these things, and, and yet that's what he wants us to do. It's pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, because the man behind the curtain has no idea what's going on. He doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know where he is. He probably doesn't even know who he is anymore. The fact that he can even come out and say that with a straight face is just mind-boggling to me. It really, really is. But this is the man who is in charge, supposedly. 
And again, it shows just how far out of touch with reality they are. And just how far they are willing to go in order to lie to us. Folks, again, this is the very reason why it is absolutely imperative that we vote this out in the midterm elections. That we punish it because the man is nuts. He's absolutely nuts. He go, it goes on. After he sl slammed Republicans, claiming that he didn't know what they were in favor of, a reporter from ABC asked if he was concerned that the two biggest difficulties he currently faces are from his own party. He then claimed that Americans overwhelmingly agree with him on a heap of unpopular proposals. Again, that's a lie. That's clearly a lie. The polls certainly don't show that. There's certainly none of the factual evidence on the ground to support that. And yet that's where we are. This is the nonsense that he is, is foisting upon us. And why? Because he thinks that the American people will believe it. He thinks a lie repeated often enough will become the truth because that comes straight out of the pages of Goebbels is propagandist principles. Well, that's not what we need. And that's not what the nation needs. But it's what Biden thinks we need. When asked if the upcoming election would be fairly conducted and the results would be legitimate, he said it all depends on whether or not we're able to make the case to the American people that some of this is trying to be set up to alter the upcoming election. And there's a Freudian slip, if ever there was one. You see, he is essentially admitting what the Democrats are about, what they're doing, and he doesn't even recognize it. He's essentially putting the cards on the table, and it's not a good look. Of course, the Democrats think that if they double down on the corruption that they have created, that... There is no way that it can be stopped, that nobody can stop them, that they know what they're doing, that they know best. Again, it's rules for thee, but not for me. Why is this the pattern that repeats with them over and over again to the point that it has reached ad nauseum? You know, this is horrific. It goes against all of the standards and norms that we have traditionally had in this country. And it speaks volumes about the direction they want to push this country. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. What they are doing is attempting to seize upon the wedge of divide and conquer in order to push us back into a horrific position. And to essentially force us to stand against one another. Well, why would they do that? Um, unless, of course, what they're doing is purposefully attempting to destroy this country. And I certainly think that that is part and parcel of what they are trying to do. So let's show them that they can't get away with that. Because we are heading into a midterm election. There's a reason why Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema are refusing to play along with the Democrats' efforts to dismantle the filibuster. And the reason they're doing that is because they know there is no public will to support them on it. That the public is keen to this political kabuki theater that they're attempting to play. And we are not going to do, allow them to get away with it. We're not going to allow this to uh, essentially be a newly established norm in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Because we are not about to allow our country to be torn apart by 
this type of chicanery. Because make no mistake about it, ladies and gentlemen, it is chicanery. It's disingenuous filth. It is an attempt to cause the nation to implode upon itself. Well, enough is enough. We're sick and tired of watching our nation become the laughingstock of the world. We're sick and tired of the failed policies of Biden, who's even sitting there saying he made no mistake in Afghanistan. Uh, again, you can't make this stuff up. You can't. It's surreal. It is surreal. It is absolutely beyond all belief. And the fact that they are just ready, willing, and able to double down on the lies in such a blatant fashion just speaks volumes about what we are going to see for the rest of the year. But, folks, we can rest assured on the fact that they are going to double down on this because we know, we know that they're... Their plans just aren't going to work. Reality and facts and evidence don't support the claims they've made. And so the only way we're going to overcome this, and the only way that we're going to ensure that the future of this country is secured, is to make our voices be heard in these midterm elections. I know it's... Sounds like a broken record that I'm harping on this, but it's of vital importance that we stand up to this because they are ready, willing, and able to double down on the lies, to keep pushing for this nonsense. And we have to remind them who's the boss. And it's ultimately we the people. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, I want to take this opportunity again to thank you for choosing to fly over the friendly airwaves with us here at Radio Aviation Excellence, the right flyer. I hope to see you again next time. Please do take care. See you around.